Apache Kafka is a distributed stream processing software developed by LinkedIn and written in Scala and Java. In this video, I want to focus on the basics on Kafka. I want to talk about uh, the components of Kafka. If you're interested, stay tuned. The first component of Kafka is what we call this Kafka server or the Kafka broker. And that Kafka broker is this basically the first server that users interact with and since it's a server right it's listening to some tcp connection to accept connections right that's how rabbit mq work that's how web servers work that's how pretty much any networking application works you have a have a server you gotta listen on a port that's the default port for kafka it's 1992 and it's called a broker and there's a magic inside the stuff right we're gonna go into it and there are two pieces of uh, abstractions here, which we call the producers. This producers produce content. It publishes content to the broker. And then consumer consumes content from the broker. The other abstraction in, in Kafka is essentially the connection, right? And then you have obviously a producer connect to the broker you're using a tcp connection and that's a raw tcp connection so it's bi-directional so broker can send information to the producer and the producer can send information to the uh to the broker and so on consumer is the same thing you establish this tcp connection right there is a protocol i couldn't find the details of that protocol to be honest and uh, while well, on my searching so i'm not sure what's the protocol here maybe it's just custom binary uh tcp Okay, and here's the thing. So once you establish these TCP connections, which we know how it works, right? We made, we talked about TCP. I'm going to reference it here. Just talk about just general TCP connection. Here's the concept. There's a topic, right? Topics are basically this logical partitions where uh, you write content to right so it's such as that logical partitioning of data all right and then when the producer writes it has to specify which topic to write to i want to write message hello to topic a right consumer hey i want to consume topic b the broker will send the messages to the consumer right and then and so on essentially so that's essentially these two pieces so topics consumer producer broker sounds good sounds simple let's complicate it a little bit so we're gonna zoom in here to the actual topic so i made like a little bit of space here so i have a topic called users in my kafka broker and then i'm gonna talk about how producing work how the kafka producer works right so i'm gonna send an example here where hey i am a producer hey broker because we established the connection right now we send a request and that request says hey broker publish john the string john to users topic okay and it did right it just go take that string and then appends it to the topic okay and then very interesting the word append we're gonna uh, we're gonna explain the concept of appending later in kafka which is very critical thing here okay you can always add stuff to kafka you cannot delete stuff it's always append only right so it's just like hey shove that that sounds simple all right let's publish something else publish ed to users it goes into the end of that and each message is referred to by essentially the topic and the position right and the position is very fast access because hey go to the position number zero that's john go to the position number one that's ed right so that's very simple to go and index very quickly to that right because it's everything is sequential essentially so here's a, a topic with a bunch of users bunch of data and let's say i'm gonna produce another message and say hey leo publish leo to users topic and append it to the end and you can start seeing that the topic is getting larger and larger and larger and larger right and uh, we're gonna talk about what we're gonna do with this right because we as software engineer and database engineer have solutions to these kind of problems things that grow really large right so what happened if i consume so consumer says hey i want to consume the topic users right let's go ahead what's going on there so if this is the first brand new consumer 
based on configuration, it's gonna read from position number zero. So it's gonna get John. So the moment you get John, it's gonna get the next one, which is Ed, and so on. So the moment you start polling information, consumer is actually polling for information. This is not a posh model. So the consumer just says, start asking for more, asking for more, asking for more, right? Unlike RabbitMQ, where the, actually the broker pushes information to the consumer. Yeah? So that's a very important thing to distinguish here. Okay, sounds simple, still simple, Hussein. That doesn't sound complex. How about we dive deeper? All right, now we know, right? Topics grow large. What do we do, guys, with databases when they grow large, when their table goes to millions, millions, millions of rows? We do sharding, right? Because it says, okay, customers from number one to 100,000 goes to this table, to this database. From 101,000 until 200,000 goes to this table in this database. And you guys, consumers or database clients, Please know, if you know we're querying customer number 100, you know to go to database A. If you're querying customer number 205, 200,005, then go to this database. So that's essentially the concept of sharding. And Kafka just borrowed that concept, right? Because we want to distribute the data because queries get slower and slower if the data is large, right? So what you do is like, hey, let's shrink it up, okay? And here's what we're going to do. We're going to do the same thing. And Kafka called them partitions. The same concept. It's sharding, essentially. And what we're going to do is that, hey, this user is so big, right? So let's, let's say I'm going to create two partitions. Partition one, user with first name that starts from A to M goes here. And users from N to Z go to partition two. Well, that sounds simple. That doesn't sound hard. And now we're working with a little bit of manageable data. And then these can grow independently. And that's cool. But the moment you introduce sharding or partitioning, then those guys suffer, right? Because now they have to know what the heck is a partition, right? They need to understand what partition, not only what topic to write or read from, they need to understand what partition to read and write from. And that kind of sucks because that introduced complexity to consumer and producer. And we're going to talk about that later. All right. So what happened now if a, part, uh, a producer want to publish Nader, a user Nader, to users, to topic users? And on partition two, I just, we just talked about it. Now we know that, hey, Nader is in and in is in between N and Z. So yeah, so he, they, the, the producer have to figure out which partition to publish the, which kind of sucks, but it all because of the scalability, we're gonna suffer, right? Life is suffering as a Jordan Peterson say, right? It's all suffering. You don't, you cannot escape it. Well, you accept it. That's what life is like. It's suffering. Life is suffering. Yes. So yeah, so Nader will go to partition two. Let's go ahead and just write it to partition two. That sounds simple. And here's what happened. The moment you write it this, now you get a new position, right? And that position is returned to the producer. Say, hey, by the way, the current position on partition two is four. Okay, zero, one, two, three, four. And then consumers, let's say, hey, I want to consume partition two on position zero, right? And that will start reading that. And if we want to, and it will update its position until it reaches the latest data, essentially, and says, okay, there's nothing more to read because you reached the end of the partition. And you can see how fast this thing is because you only work with indexes. You work with positions and partitions. And you don't really say select star from topics where uh, first name equals Sarah, all right? You don't do that, right? This is not relational Postgres database, right? You don't use Kafka to do ad hoc queries. You, you use it for fast writing and distributed of events that happens. And we're going to talk about the benefits, essentially. That's an example of a pub sub architecture where a pub sub is useful. Okay, so PubSub, Q, each has use case. Kafka came in here in the picture and says, we want to do both. And that's bold, man. That's bold question. 
Right. Kafka answered this question from the beginning, from the get go, from the design. They designed, they built a system with those two in mind. Okay. And the answer to this was consumer group, right? And this is one of the most confusing, to be honest, abstraction in Kafka. It took a while for me to really understand and nail this down. So I'm going to explain consumer groups right now. All right. So consumer groups were invented to do essentially parallel processing on partitions, right? Because now consumers can read from a partition. You are aware of the partition, right? And that's bad. So the consumer group can actually fix that problem. Remove the awareness from the consumer of a partition. Another benefit is it can kind of run and consume parallel data, like consume parallel information from multiple partitions. And we're going to talk about that. So let's assume we have here a consumer group. Let's go to group one. I'm going to add a new, brand new consumer, just joining the group, right? So you create a new consumer, and then you say join group. And the moment you join the group, and if you're the only consumer, tough luck, man, because you are now responsible of all partitions in this topic. Because now you subscribe to topic users, all right? And that topic has two partitions. And if it has seven, you are responsible for the seven partitions. And what does that mean? It means that any time you start consuming, right, you will get a message from partition one, right? A message from partition two, or if there is existing partition three. So you start receiving messages from both partitions. And that's not bad, okay, that's okay, because if, if you're a good consumer and can handle the load, you can just essentially receive messages, and you don't really care which partition this is coming from, right? So what this is, this is what really interesting. The moment you add another consumer to the group, the group rebalances. They say, oh, okay, consumer one was really overloaded, so let's remove partition one and give you partition two, consumer two, all right? And here's the thing. Each partition has to be consumed by one and only one consumer. You can have one consumer consuming two partitions or three partitions or four partitions, but one partition better be consumed with one consumer. That's the rule. And consumer group makes sure of that. Okay. So now we have the rule. That's good. And here's the thing. Consumer three cannot join the group because they say, hey, you, you don't have anything to do, man. Right. So. And the moment you do that, something interesting happened because now, right, you can start consuming these two partitions in parallel. And that's really cool concept, right? You will act essentially like a queue, right? The system becomes a queue. And you say, Hussein, how, right? And here's the thing. If partition one and consumer one is responsible for partition one, it will only receive data from partition one. And the moment it consumes one piece, that's it. it the position is updated in the group. It says, oh, partition one, zero, position zero has been read. Move on. Okay. The moment you read one, it goes to two and three and four and five. You can, you, it just keeps going, right? That's by default. Obviously, you can fix the position to go back and read. But by default, if you just left the group as it is, it will act like a queue, right? The moment you read John, that's it. It's almost like popped off the queue and you start reading the next information, the next information, right? And consumer two will never be able to read John because it's responsible for partition two, right? So here's, we just achieved the ability to do a queue, which is amazing, right? If you want to act like a queue, put all your consumers in one group. If you want to act like a pub sub system where the message is broadcast it to every consumer, simple. Each consumer goes into its unique group. And that's okay because a partition can be consumed by multiple consumers in different group, right? Because the partition is a group dependent, right? And that's okay, right? So that's how a consumer group essentially act and what do we get as a result we get parallel processing for free which is amazing right because if you have like multiple consumers in one group they can start reading multiple partition in parallel and do so much coolish stuff